Hi everyone, this is Stefano from Soto Zen Channel. As requested, in this video I will show you how I approach to character animation in Blender. At the end of this two parts tutorial, we will have this little green guy here performing a quite difficult acrobatic flick flack. And even if this is not a beginner tutorial, I will walk you step by step through the entire process of cartoonish uh, animation using Rigify and also some shape keys animation. I really hope that you like this idea and I'm sure that we will have some fun animating this little guy in Blender. We have a lot to talk about so let's get started. So here we are inside Blender and this is my scene. I can um, get rid of some object that we don't need. Okay, let's also delete this collection here. Okay, so before we start, I think I have to explain and show you something regarding the process and my approach to cartoonish character animation in Blender. And let's start by the basic things. You can see that I have this uh, 3D view where my character and uh, Rigify is visible and I often switch with this between the overlay uh, option visible or not because I, I like um, to watch without all these um, working and elements or, or this controlling object. So using this you can switch and turn off all these elements in order to better see what you are doing. Another thing is that I always using the graph editor. So I have this uh, horizontal splitted window down here set to graph editor. And this is because it's where I will tweak polish and edit all the function curve that I will create during the animation process. And down here I also have the default timeline visible. Here you can set the start and end frame and that's more or less all about my user interface. Let's talk about the character that I made, this simple uh, guy here. You see that this issue here is uh, because the texture is mm, not showing properly because the uh, subdivision surface modifier is set to zero. If you go here on the modifier stack, you see that we have the armature modifier and then we have the subdivision surface modifier, but it's set to zero. It will be enabled only during the render process. And this is because during animation, I want to have the best feedback from Blender that is possible to have. And if you see here, this value FPS frame per second is running at 24, 25. This means that what I'm looking at is perfectly on real in real time. This means that what I'm watching is uh, what will be uh, displayed after the render and this is very important in animation I can show you that if I just increase uh, one subdivision step on this modifier here if I now run my animation you see that it slowed down and you see that the FPS turn right means that Blender is advising me, hey, pay attention that what you are seeing is not actually in real time. It dropped it down to 17, 18, something like that. So, of course, it depends on the power of your machine or the workstation that you are working on. But the good advice is always to work with less polygon possible when animating. So, I don't care if it's not in a, the smooth of the final shape, I care to feel and get the mood of what's going on. And if for some reason you can't have this kind of situation, 
you can animate, but you will be forced to often uh, check uh, what you are doing, doing a viewport render animation, and then watching the uh, result. Uh, okay, I won't go during this video into the process of how to use and create and attach the uh, rigify armature itself to the character. If you don't know how to do that, I have a couple of video uh, regarding that and I'm also preparing a new one that will be online soon. So um, this is what I made for my character. Of course, in this case, due to the unique anatomy of this cartoonish little green alien guy here, I have to adapt a lot and get rid of a lot of un unnecessary controller, in this case, on Rigify. So let's enter pose mode. And what I want to do is to select everything, pressing A, frame on my uh, graph editor, all my uh, function curves here and I want to delete all of them so I press X and I choose delete keyframes so now if I press the space bar nothing is happening except you can see for the shape animation the shape animation is something that are not depending on the skeleton on the armature itself is something that uh, I added on top of the uh, armature animation so let's get rid also of all of the shape animation. I will explain you later how to create this. Let me go here and maybe adjust a little bit the, the mouth, something like that. Okay, let's go back to the rigify and let's enter pause mode once again. So what I want to do now is to reset all the rotation, scale, and position value for all these controller objects. And to do this, I selected them all. And I can press Alt-G, Alt-R, and Alt-S. And now what I get is the exact uh, original mesh as I model it. Okay, this is the default position of my character. So essentially now we are ready to animate. If I move around some of the controller object, you can see that the body is responding. But before doing that, I have to show you something about Rigify. Rigify is a very powerful tool and it comes with a lot of options that you may want to know. The first thing is that you have many, many items that you can have visible. If you enable all of them, you see that there's really a lot of controlling object that you can animate during your, uh, your work. So the first thing that we want to separate is IK from FK. IK stands for inverse kinematic and FK for forward kinematics. They are two different way of animating your character and you don't need to have both of them visible. For example, for this kind of project, I know that I will only use inverse kinematic. So I can turn off all the left and right arm for uh, forward kinematics controller and also for the leg left and right. Also, all these tweak objects I don't need. I can switch off and also with for the arm I don't need the tweak object. And one thing that I will sure use but in a second moment, not in the first stage of animation, is the finger. So let's turn off also the finger and also the finger details, all these elements here. Let's turn off also this. I don't need the root. Uh, the root bones is the one that will control all the hierarchy. And I don't need to have this visible because when I'm in right autographic view, for example, and I want to select the foot, this will be 
can disturb, disturb me a little bit, so let's turn this off also. Okay, the face, nothing happens, and that's because I totally deleted all the face controller because the anatomy of this guy doesn't require the face bone, so I delete them controller, so let's keep this off. Torso tweak also I don't need. So in the end, these are all the elements that we will need to animate our character. Only I added these two extra bones during the creation process. And these two extra bones just control the rotation of the eyes. One thing that you will probably often see me do is to switch between individual origin pivot point option and median point. Okay, and that's because for example, when I want to rotate the eyes, I need the individual um, option because otherwise, if I am in medium point, I will get something like this. On the other hand, if I select the chest bone and the hand and I am in individual rotation, I will get this kind of behavior and instead I probably want to do this. So sometimes you want to have median point and some other time you want to have individual origin point as option. So essentially during all this animation tutorial we will use one, two, three, four and five controllers. With these five controllers we will be able to do all this uh, animated action. Another important part of Rigify is the relationship options that you have inside this armature. So essentially this is uh, an hierarchy, a complex hierarchy that works from parent to child and you have the possibility to change this relationship between the, the elements. For example, I can have the hand you see you have for the hand you have this IK parent slot that you can open and you have few options to choose from. So for example now by default is set on root and this means that if I move the chest bone the hands won't follow. So I can move my body or head in this case and the hand will stay still but I can have some kind of situation when, where I need to have this parented to the chest bone. If, I, if this is the case, I just have to go here and choose chest. If I now rotate this, you see that now the hand is following the uh, movement of the chest. Also, another interesting option is to parent the hand controller to its shoulder. You see you have shoulder.l means the left shoulder in this case. And this means that if I now, um, let me show the pivot point, if I now rotate the shoulder the hand will follow. And this also can be very useful. The important thing with this, you can have pro and cons on each one of these uh, options, the important thing is to think ahead of this kind of uh, relationship. Otherwise, you may uh, find yourself in the middle after uh, minutes of animated uh, work and you discover that ah, it was better to have this free from, from the chest and now it's probably too late. Even if you can animate this, I mean, I can choose to have the hand, uh, in this case, uh, free from the chest until frame 20, let's say, and I can insert a keyframe here, and at frame 21, for some reason, I need the hand to be child of the chest, and I will insert another keyframe. So you see that if I at frame 15, for example, I can rotate this and the hand will stay still. If I go after frame 20 and I rotate the chest, the hand will follow. 
And the same thing we can do for the fit. You have the IK parent uh, option also for the fit, but most of the time I want to have the fit uh, child of the root and I want to be able to move the, um, the body independently from the fit. And one last thing about Rigify, I think, before we can start, is this IK stretch slider. By default, it's set to one, and this means that if I move the hand controller far away from the body, the mesh will be deformed and stretched in order to uh, stay connected to follow the position of the controller wherever I put this on the scene. And this, of course, is very useful in order to achieve some cartoonish deformation during animation. But uh, personally, I prefer to set this always to zero. You, can, you see that if I uh, slide down to zero, you see that the mesh is gradually going back to its original, original shape. I like to have this set to zero because uh, in this way, I am aware of the limit of my mesh. And if I have to go further than that, I can do this, but I know that this is happening and I will choose to do it. For example, I can tell you when I animate this flick flack, I start without seeing that this character has short hands, short arms, so is not able to do to land on the floor without hit his head on the on the floor. And so in that moment what I have done, I use I take advance of this IK stretch in order to be able to go above the head. And and that's very, very, very useful. So let me put this back to zero and reset rotation and position. So let's go back to object mode and I want to show you yeah, also, in addition to this armature, I added these simple eyebrows that uh, I will animate using some basic shape keys later. Okay, I think we can conclude here this first part. It was, in my opinion, necessary to explain all of this concept in order to be able to follow the next part more easily. Uh, for my patrons, I, that I always thank so much for their support, I will upload this nice little guy so that if you want to have some fun, you can download this and try to animate it. Um, for all the rest of you, of course, I invite you to visit my Patreon page and consider joining me there in order to support me and my work even more. And I'm already working on the second part of this video, so I will see you here very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and stay safe. Ciao.